Dr. Dre might have the highest shooting percentage in hip hop history. Everything this man has touched has turned into gold or multi-platinum. From N.W.A. and his solo work, to his production on albums for Eminem, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, The Game, Kendrick Lamar, and more, Dre has created classic moments in the culture for multiple decades. But creating at such a high level doesn't come easy. In fact, there are many stories that showcase Dre as a perfectionist who will not settle for anything less than once in a lifetime. And in the case of a project like Detox, it may never even come in this lifetime. We've actually been trying to plan for this video a long time. It was kind of difficult coming up with a concept. Me and my man Phil had to just sit down like we usually do and come up with something that would look different from anything that's playing on TV right now. I have a serious passion for, for anything that I'm doing that has to do with entertainment, you know. I am a producer. That's my job. That's my title. You know, I can turn into a performer and do that. But what I really love to do is produce and organize, make things happen. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what working in the studio with Dr. Dre is actually like, straight from the mouths of artists like Eminem, 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar, and more. When it comes to a Dre studio session, one thing that seems to be consistent no matter who he's working with is that every detail matters. From the vocal layering on a hook to an ad lib, Dre will not stop until it sounds exactly like he envisioned it in his mind. He will work with an artist on their flow, their tone, and everything in between until things sound perfect. Just listen to Snoop talk about Dre molding him into the artist that he is today when they first met. Dr. Dre was the perfect father figure, role model, mentor, and producer for me at the time because I was young, uh -huh. I was raw, but I needed direction and I needed some sculpting. And he was able to shape me and mold me and teach me the right way of how to do it. And he had the right team around me. And I've always respected the fact that he was willing to teach me when I was not who I am today. You know, people see the Snoop Dogg that's polished up and shined up, but they didn't see the one that was a rock, that he's seen the diamond in me. And I appreciate him for that. I want to thank him right now for that. In a 2009 interview, The Game described a session like this. If you get in the studio with Dre, you best be prepared to be there for a long time because he's gonna coach you word for word until he gets you to 100% where he wants it to be. You're gonna be there all night working on one verse. And that word for word part is not an exaggeration. We spoke to Too Short about working with Dr. Dre and he said that Dre made him repeat this one word in particular for over four hours straight until he got it right. I know you're probably wondering what that one word was that could make it so important. Well, here's what Short said. I did an eight hour session to record the verse. Then I did an eight hour session to touch up the verse. And then he called me back for four hours to say the pussy for four hours. The pussy. And <laughs> when he played it back, I had no regrets. I never sounded like that in my life. And this is apparently a true story. Here's how the session went down. People kept saying it's, it's hard to work with Jay, it's hard to work with Jay. Then I talked to Snoop and he said, man, most motherfuckers can't hang with Dr. Dre in the studio. He'd break, he'd break you down to your least compound and just and just shrivel you up and you just walk out of there with your tail tucked between your fucking legs. <laughs> and Snoop said, it's not gonna make sense some of the shit he tell you, just do it. Whatever he <laughs> says do, just do it. And I had a chick with me that day. Dre kept saying, he said, say the pussy. So I'm like, the pussy. Then he got me, he's like, say the pussy. So now I'm going, the pussy. And he, no, he's like, no, the pussy. We did that shit for four fucking hours. She said, <laughs> she said, she said, y'all had my pussy so wet. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> she said, y'all said the pussy so much, I was just sitting up there wet. Y'all just kept saying the pussy. She said, my pussy was reacting. Well, Dr. Dre. He gonna make you go in there and do and 7,000 times. You don't want to, I want the and, they go and, you know, and, or and, you know, you know, fucker be in there having a headache. Yeah, corrupting it all night doing shit. <laughs> and when I spoke to Daz Dillinger, he confirmed that no matter what the word is, it matters how it sounds. And the perfectionist mindset isn't only limited to words. When I interviewed Scott Storch, he said that Dre was so dedicated to making a song perfect that he went above and beyond just for a sound effect in the background of a track. It was so much fun. We had so much fun, dude. There's a skit on there 
on the album where we called in like all these porn stars to come in and reenact like sex noises and we're doing some wild shit in the fucking booths and shit like <laughs> dude i never seen no shit like that in my life but, that's how you know, you know it's authentic dude one time i came into the studio and dre was doing some shit i think the song was called buried alive or whatever i don't know what it was something it was some crazy fucking song that he's doing and he had in the middle of the control room bags of sand with rocks and a shovel and uh, some shit put down because he wanted to get the sound of this thing it was an important part of the song it, rhythmically he was going to turn the shoveling of like digging like a hole and shit like <sighs> and i was like yo they just go there wild Wild. While J-Rock was in the studio with Dre, he only added to the mythology. You gotta give him 112%. It can't be 99 or 100%. It has to be more than that. There's 2,000 pieces, but at the end of the day, all the pieces come together. His mind is crazy. But it seems like most of Dre's perfectionist tendencies come from an internal place rather than an external one with expectations or pressures. It's all from within Dre because not just anybody can critique his work. It actually seems like he is his own biggest critic. Nobody can critique my shit unless you've done half of the stuff that I've accomplished. So much so that sometimes Dre might even scrap an entire project. Just Blaze said that he was working on Detox for nine years and that he's heard nearly completed versions of the album that have literally been scrapped two or three times. He said the work on Detox, I've heard near complete versions of the album. Then he turns around and scratches it and does the same thing two or three times over. I'm sure fans would pay a lot of money just to hear those scrapped versions. Do you guys think we'll ever get Detox in some form or is that just a thing of the past at this point? And what do you even think it would sound like in 2022? Even though Dre wants everything to be perfect, his level of expectation brings out the best in all of the people around him. He's never been shy about admitting that he'll allow the best writers in the world to write songs for him. Here he is talking about the process of writing Forgot About Dre. That was Eminem's idea. He wrote the song for me and Snoop originally. He laid the reference vocals for Snoop and I liked the way it sound, so. We just kept it that way and I laid my vocals and that was it. And here is Jay-Z speaking on writing Still Dre and having an immense respect for what Dre and Snoop were doing. The music they were making and the chronic and all that, you know, in, or in order for me to like really like nail, get the essence of Dre and Snoop had to be like a, a studied reverence of, you know, yeah. what they were doing to, to say, like even put myself in their shoes. Think about that record. So that record came after, um, Dre leaves Death Row. It was all about reminding people. Yeah, how my last album was The Chronic. That's one of the best lines in hip hop. That still has got to be one of the greatest reference tracks of all time. Creating greatness in Dre's studio doesn't always come right away, but it's always a very collaborative process. Here's 50 talking about his process when it comes to working with Dre. And I walk in the studio with Dre and record the first record this point in order to make him comfortable. And he go, all right, we're going to find a record now. You know, but when he see me walk in, he's probably unsure what, what kind of production or what way we actually going with the record. And I record the first song, he listens and he goes, let me hear the records that you did. I play the other music, because he feels like he wants his record to be the best record every time. I bring Death to My Enemies on track three on my actual album. It stands out like sore thumb for real. And 50 says sometimes there were even separate rooms for him, M, and Dre so that they could all be in their zone together. It gets crazy at different points because Everybody's working on their own time. So it's usually three rooms. Really? When we work together. It's usually the Dre room, M, and my actual room. We play music, we go through each one because we gotta get it and then go to the writing process. And Dre is never afraid to switch it up and add fresh energy to his studio sessions. He's known for bringing up and coming talent into his studio. In fact, it actually seemed like it was a rite of passage at one point for upcoming rappers to be invited into the studio to work on Detox. And this process even proved to be fruitful for Dre, even if none of the songs ever got officially released. I mean, that's apparently how he found Kendrick when he was in a studio session with J. Cole. Did you tell Dr. Dre about Kendrick? Who 
who told you that? <laughs> that reaction is still one of the greatest responses to an interview question of all time. And shout out to Nardwar, the GOAT. I went in there to like uh, work on detox or whatever, you know, um, how Dre do. It's like, if you're a young rapper and he rock with you, he want to bring you through and like, how you test the water. So yeah, I was like, Yo, you gotta sign this kid from Compton, boom, boom, Kendrick, boom, boom. And Dre clearly loved Kendrick's writing so much that he added him to the list of legendary rappers who have written verses for him as Kendrick wrote Dre's part on the recipe. Dre said, this track was done by a guy named Scoop DeVille and we just went into the studio and added our elements to it. I mixed it up, Kendrick wrote the words, it came together and we fell in love with it. But maybe the most impressive thing about Dre's flow and tone is that even though other rappers have helped shape a lot of it, Dre can effortlessly move from something crafted by M to something from Jay-Z or Kendrick and it all still sounds natural. And it probably comes from his never ending love for the music. Kendrick said this about the one thing that he learned from working with Dre early on. The main thing you have to have in this music, man, is the passion for it. You can't never lose that. Because once you lose that, all you're gonna be doing is just chasing a dollar. And once you're chasing a dollar, you lose your whole craft on how to make genuine good music. And it seems like that's something Dre instilled in him because two years later, Kendrick said that was the best piece of advice he ever got from Dre as he elaborated on the statements. It's to keep the passion for the music. You know, I always keep that because so many people lose passion and um, everything starts to be about a dollar and that's when, you know, the value of the music goes down. But overall, Dr. Dre is a student of the game and a connoisseur of music. Someone who constantly pushes the sonic boundaries that exist within hip hop. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that he will ultimately go down as one of the most influential people within music history. Even if we never get detox, we've gotten enough material from Dre to last another few lifetimes. For Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Hecht, and this has been another episode of DX Deep Dives. Let us know who you want us to cover in the next episode, and let us know in the comments what is the one Dr. Dre studio session that you would have loved to have been in the booth for. Make sure to subscribe for daily news videos, artist interviews, and more content like this. I'll leave you with a speech from Dre that shows his self-awareness and humbleness, but the day that he's speaking about may never actually come. Peace. When Dr. Dre falls off, if if and when that happens, I'm cool. I'll never have to touch another button as long as I live, straight up.